Hi everyone, this is Dr. Hall, and we're gonna go through the structures of the anterior abdominal wall today. So I've started already with some of the skeletal features. So this is supposed to be my pubic crest, the top of the pubic bone here. And then of course in the midline we have the pubic symphysis, my pubic crest over here. And then the pelvis will curve around and then as the ilium comes up, and laterally, you're gonna have this protuberance here in the front, which is the anterior superior iliac spine. Remember it as as is, A-S-I-S, -S, anterior superior iliac spine. That's kind of the point of your hip that you can feel. Um, I can't show you right now, but I will in class. All right, and then I also have my sternum with my xiphoid process and just a couple of representative ribs here, right? So of course, these would be the costal cartilages. This would be a true rib. This is a false rib. And then my costal margins would be the edge of that. So this is kind of my boundaries of our location for the abdominal wall. So the first thing we're going to put in place is the deepest structure, and the deepest structure is going to be the parietal peritoneum, right? So that is the membrane that is covering the deep surface of the abdominal wall. So I'm gonna use some saran wrap for that. And I'm gonna tuck it up. Hopefully this won't all fall apart. Tuck it up under here to try to keep it in place. So my parietal peritoneum is going to be my deepest layer. And then on top of that, I'm gonna have the extra peritoneal fascia, um, sometimes also just called the extra peritoneal fat. And because as you might imagine, there's a little bit of fat in that space just outside the peritoneum. I'm gonna enlist some scotch tape so that things don't fall apart too badly here. So that's my extra peritoneal fascia or extra peritoneal fat it is sometimes referred to. Okay, so now we're gonna have another membrane. So you'll see as we do the anterior thoracic wall, there are just a lot of layers. <laughs> So the next layer I'm gonna bring in is going to be the transversalis fascia. And it's named the transversalis fascia because it is on the undersurface of the transversus abdominis muscle. So now we've had kind of three membranes on top of each other. We haven't even gotten to the muscles of the abdominal wall yet. So the deepest is the parietal peritoneum. On top of that is the extra peritoneal fascia. And then on top of that, we have the transversalis fascia. So now I can go ahead and start adding in some of the muscles. So I'm gonna start with those three muscles um, that make up the majority of the abdominal wall. So the deepest one extending from the costal margins down on, oh, I forgot a ligament. So, from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic crest, we have a ligament called the inguinal ligament. I'm sure these are all deep to the pelvis here. Hopefully my pelvis won't fall off. Inguinal ligament, okay, right there. Now that's important because there are some structures that are going to have to come out through this space between the pelvis and the inguinal ligament. Notably, your femoral vessels and nerve are going to travel through here. And then male-bodied people, we're also gonna have the spermatic cord traveling through that space. So it's an important landmark. Okay, so we have our three layers of membranes, uh, parietal peritoneum, then extra peritoneal fascia, then transversalis fascia. So now I'm gonna actually add the transversus abdominis muscle, which starts way out on the back, actually and then curves around and it does not come all the way to the midline. It turns into just this fascia when we get to the midline. All right, would it fit better that way? Mm, not, not, not really, okay. So this is my transversus abdominis muscle and you might remember, hopefully from anatomy and physiology that the transversus abdominal muscle has horizontal fiber direction. Okay, so put in your horizontal fiber direction here for the transversus abdominal muscle. 
the deepest of the three muscles that make up the majority of our abdominal wall. So obviously if these muscles shorten, right, they're gonna scrunch in your belly. They kind of compress the abdominal cavity which is really important for being able to have a bowel movement. So that's the transversus abdominis. Also important for just kind of stabilizing the abdomen, right? When you want to lift something and you kind of stabilize your core. Okay, so transversus abdominis. And then the next muscle is going to be internal oblique. So of course, oblique means diagonal. And so the fiber direction for the internal obliques is going to be diagonal. And thankfully, it's going to be the same orientation as the internal intercostals. So that's helpful. So it's going to go from medial and kind of superior medial to inferior lateral, right? So towards the medial aspect and superior towards the lateral inferior. So just like that, that's that fiber direction. So obviously, if I shorten this, it's going to bend the torso this way. Right, so when you do those kind of sit-ups where you do your elbows to your opposite knees, right, you're using your obliques for that. And then finally, we're gonna have the external obliques. So sitting right on top of the internal obliques and their fiber direction is going at 90 degrees. So from up and out to down and in, just like the inter external intercostal muscles, the external obliques have that same fiber direction. Now, all three of these muscles continue around the side body and onto the back, okay? So I'm only showing them anteriorly, but they're gonna wrap around and really kind of form the abdominal cavity. So we have a conspicuous absence in the middle here, and that's gonna be where our rectus abdominis muscle goes. Before I put that in place, however, I'm going to put in place some blood vessels that we're going to find on the deep surface of the rectus abdominis muscle, abdominis muscle. So superiorly, believe it or not, branches off of the internal thoracic artery and vein extend down into the abdominal wall here. And these are the ah, superior epigastric artery and vein stay. And then inferiorly, we will have the inferior epigastric artery and vein on each side. Okay. Now, all these membranes that we see posteriorly, which you'll remember are the parietal peritoneum, the extraperitoneal fascia, and the transversalis fascia, all three of them together, posteriorly in this space, we refer to as the posterior rectus sheath. Because the muscle that's gonna go here, the rectus abdominis muscle, rectus means straight up and down, as in erect, and then abdominis, of course, of the abdomen. Do they give them enough room? Almost, <laughs> okay? And they're gonna attach from all the way up on the xiphoid process and the ribs all the way down to the pubic crest. Let's see if I can make it go all the way. And of course, they're going to have a longitudinal fiber direction. So when you're doing just a plain sit-up, right, these are the muscles that are flexing the spine, bending it forward. In between these two muscles, if I'd given them a little bit more space, there is a space where that fascia, those membranes come together, both anteriorly and posteriorly, right? From, from the back side and from the front side, they're gonna come together and form this space. And this is called the linea alba. And linea just for line, alba for white, because it actually does look white. And we're gonna find right about here, the umbilicus, your belly button. And there's some really interesting structures attached to that on the deep surface, which we're gonna do in a separate video. So the only other thing I need to add now are my tendinous intersections. These are these little breaks of connective tissue in the rectus abdominis muscle that then allows you to have a six pack. Right. You might think, oh, I don't have a six pack. I assure you, you do. It might not be visible from the outside, but we all have one. Isn't that a lovely thought? You have one. You might not be able to see it through your other layers, but you have it. 
Okay. So now I need to add the anterior rectus sheath. So I'm going to get some more saran wrap. Ugh. And have trouble tearing it off. Okay, there we go. So the rectus abdominis muscle is inside. It's entirely tucked within this connective tissue called the rectus sheath. And those blood vessels are inside the rectus sheath with it. Okay, so we are almost done now. The next thing, <laughs> we're almost done, right? There's still a little bit left to do. The next thing is uh, another membrane that we're going to find superficial to all of these structures, and that's called scarpa's fascia. So scarpa's fascia is dense, regular connective tissue. I'm just gonna grab my scissors. And it is going to overlie these three muscles here. And I prop it up so you can see better with the camera, but then I don't have gravity on my side. Okay, so this is Scarpa's fascia overlying the external oblique. And then on top of that, we're going to have a layer of subcutaneous fat. And that layer of subcutaneous fat is what varies in thickness depending on your general adiposity on some other characteristics. And it's just this fatty layer <laughs> on top of all of this, <laughs> okay? I didn't, I didn't think it could support another layer of uh, Play-Doh. So Camper's fascia is on top of Scarpa's fascia and it's just the subcutaneous fat that we all have underneath our abdominal skin, some of us more than others. Okay, let's do a quick review before my pelvis completely falls off here. Okay, so going superficial to deep, we have Camper's fascia, Scarpa's fascia. In the midline, and only in the midline, we have the rectus sheath with the rectus abdominis muscle with its tendinous intersections, linea alba, and the umbilicus. We look on the deep surface of the rectus abdominis muscles, we will find the superior epigastric artery and vein, and lower down the inferior epigastric artery and vein. Coming out from the midline, we have the external obliques with their fiber direction going this way. Beneath those, the internal obliques, fiber direction the opposite way. And then the deepest muscle is the transversus abdominis with that horizontal fiber direction. We have our inguinal ligament that was attached from our anterior superior iliac spine to our pubic crest. This was our pubic symphysis. And then we have the three deep membranous layers here, transversalis fascia, extraperitoneal fascia, and then the parietal peritoneum itself. And so that's it for anterior abdominal wall. There will be a separate video on the deep structures.